when planning and preparing to do our strategic uh, advisory and our support for our business continuity and disaster recovery, we tend to want to utilize technology to support us through our resiliency period. So when there is an event, it helps us overcome the event and we stay productive and things stay resilient and available for our, you know, our part, third parties, our internal staff, our systems, uh, and things remain resilient, right? Things are up and running and there's no issues. So that's the state that we want to get. And in this video, we're going to talk about some resilient technologies that are out there and that are available to help us uh, along the way. Starting with number one, if many of you that are familiar with, uh, who have been around with IT for, for many years, kind of understand RAID. RAID has been around for, for many years, right? That's our redundant array of disks, right? And these are hard drives. So we had a series of hard drives within the system. So I'm going to say system here. And I've got a bunch of hard drives within those systems. Well, then we could use RAID as a technology to take advantage of those technologies. And then it basically overcomes the loss of a hard drive. So if I had a system over here and we had a, a single hard drive, right? Um, and it became corrupted, well, then we would lose that data, right? So if we had a hard drive, and then that device became corrupted, then that's not good, right? We're going to lose the data. We're going to lose everything on there. And we, you know, chances are we're going to have to restore. If we've got a backup and procedure around that and restore and backup. But if we don't, then it becomes quite challenging, right? So once it becomes corrupted, well, then we lose the data and maybe restoring from backup. Obviously, there's going to be downtime and outages and things tend to become quite challenging when we start uh, having that central point of failure. So... Uh, again, that single drive system is something that we want to avoid, right? So anytime we develop systems or across networking, and we'll talk about some um, redundant network technologies in just a second, we want to avoid single points of failure. So we want to use and be able to use several drives as we write the data. Uh, we want to spread them out across multiple drives using that specifically the RAID technology, right? So that's what RAID technology is all about. Now, we want to multiply those drives and write in the data to those drives where we're, using, we're obviously using that technology. Um, so if we've got a bunch of hard drives here, right? So we've got four hard drives. We can make use of a tool or within a specific technology called a parity. I'm just going to put Y there. Parity. Now, this is quite hard as I'm trying to talk and think and write. Um, so just bear with me as I just sort of work through this. So... Now, where, where parities come in play is basically the parity allows us to recover if one of those drives become corrupted, right? So if one of these drives crash, as the data then begins to, you know, I'm going to say the data is writing, you know, writing data on the hard drives. Now, this one crashes. So this fourth hard drive here, for some reason, malfunctions, it gets corrupted, it goes out, right? With parities... What a parity is basically is when we have enough information on the other hard drives, along with that parity information, we could end up running the same information, right? So even though we've lost that single hard drive, we can use the parity to then recover bits of that, and then we can still function with these remaining hard drives. So we can get we can replace that hard drive with a new one, uh, and it will add it into the actual group of disks. So the data there will be rewritten. Uh, from the previous state prior to obviously that hard drive being corrupted and going out. Uh, this is going out. Um, and then from there, it's, you know, we can then zero downtime, right? Because then we can take that data and then rewrite that data to our existing hard drives. And that's the parity essentially allowing us to take that data, rewrite it to the other sort of the cluster there of, of our hard drives. And that parity will allow us to have zero downtime, which is very popular and helps us in obviously our resiliency. And then obviously when we lose hard drives. So that's all about RAID and parity within RAIDs. Um, the next part here is our server clusters. And server clusters, you know, something that can help us with redundancy. Um, server clusters is obviously a cluster of servers, right? Uh, meaning they, they share a workload. Now, if I've got, if we have X application over here and that application needs to come in and utilize a, a server here, so I've got three servers, let's say they're all in a cluster. Um, and that server then wants to utilize resources. So if we have the application running on that server and run across three of these services, typically what we'll do is we'll put a, maybe a load balancer here. So there's gonna be a load balancer. And then that load balancer will then help us distribute the traffic. So maybe it will send a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. And then as that traffic comes in, it starts directing, and I think I've used the worst possible example here. So let me just clean this up. So here is our load balancer. And then as our traffic comes in, I'm going to separate the traffic out. So one traffic comes in and access one resource. 
other bit of traffic comes in and accesses that resource. So what that server or the load balancer essentially is going to do is basically redirect or basically load balance the, the actual traffic. So again, um, it'll basically redirect it to one of those three servers. Now, what would happen if one of those servers goes fairly up? So let's just say this one goes offline. Well, then we've still got the two other ones that obviously we can still support. Uh, and then we've got the other two there that can help us and share that load of maybe that application. And then one will be active, one will be passive, or depending on the technology and the, the naming schema it's going to use to stay active and passive or active and standby, uh, or whatever that naming technology is going to be in that state. Uh, and then we won't experience downtime. So the cluster in that case will help us by clustering the servers together, basically it gives us a form of redundancy. That way, if one does go offline, then one will activate. Uh, and obviously there's naming conventions and they, they communicate in a way where they're going to send each other you know, little packages of notes say, hey, are you alive? And little keep alive and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into the details of that, but that is the concept around clustering service, clustering servers, not services. Uh, we want to have that fault tolerance in place that if one does go offline, then the traffic can then just redistribute back to maybe these two servers. Now, one of them will be an active or passive or active and standby or whatever the technology, again, that vendor has the different naming technologies and stuff like that. One of them will be the main one and then the other one will be a backup and so on and so forth. So then someone here should get an alert to say, hey, one of the servers has gone offline. We need to investigate and then we can go away and investigate. Obviously, this one's now become passive. Maybe it was in another state before. Uh, depending on what vendor and technology we're using. So that's kind of in a nutshell around sort of um, server clusters and why they're important. Data replication is the other one. So let's just make a move over here to data replication. And data replication is basically where we have a single server and it replicates to another server. So it basically sends, I've got one server here and then I've got another server here. And basically what we're doing is we're replicating the same amount of data to the other server. Right, so it's a mirror copy of something, and then the mirror server then will get another physical, you know, maybe another physical location of such. Maybe it's in a hot site. So I'm going to put hot site here, and maybe this is our headquarters site. So main office is here, and then maybe uh, we're then replicating our data across to that hot site. So we're sending a mirror copy of our data. Now, um, there could be storage devices again with lots of hard drives in that case. We can have a SANS or a NAS, um, and then they can replicate their information to that other location. So data replication is basically having that mirror copy of um, of the information to another location. Again, it could be in a different geolocation, but we're replicating the same amount of data. We're basically mirroring what we have on that initial server. Um, again, if we want to have that offsite, and then it helps us recover and then being able to pull down that data should there, there be an event, we can then go online and obviously restore the backup and then pull the data back. So again, that could obviously take some time depending on the bandwidth and the link location, stuff like that. So there's many different variant reasons on how long and how far and wide things will take, but that's kind of data replication um, in a nutshell. Now let's talk a little bit about redundancy for networks, right? And this is some common sort of technologies out there that help us. But if we've got two service providers, ISP1 and ISP2, right? And then we're utilizing, you know, whatever service provider we're using. And obviously, they, they're hopefully we're, they're using different cabling and uh, backbone technologies and stuff like that because some of them use the same backbone infrastructure uh, or the same connectivity. So hopefully, they're using different sort of cables and connections and, and backbone services. And then we begin to build out some sort of redundancy across our technologies of our service providers, right? So our firewalls, so if we've got some firewalls here, I'm gonna run out some firewalls, and then maybe we've got some layer three switches here. Now I'm not gonna go into the full design and the architecture that's a bit outside the scope of this, but uh, let's say these are all layer three switches, you know, we'll, we'll, what we would wanna do is, and you have some sort of, um, you know, some cross connects, you want ISP server and one to have access to our firewall, Let's say this is firewall one, firewall two, and they'll basically do a bit of a cross connect, right? So you have a bit of redundancy across. I'll get some colors here, get pick, I don't know if blue's the right color, let's move pick orange. And then you have a bit of a, a cross connect like this. That way, if one of them do go offline, and the same vice versa to LA3 switches, right? So you have a bit of cross connection to all of them. Um, a bit like this.
and it looks something like that. So you've got a bit of a cross connect going on. That way, if one server goes offline or something happens, you know, should we need to get access to our customers or you know internal resources or whatever that looks like? Then we have access to obviously a redundancy across depending on the technologies. Again, if we're using Cisco, whatever we're using here, they're going to have different technologies on the way they're going to communicate around the network, and that's fair and fine. But you know, basically from here on out, you want to have that redundancy or that single point of failure reduced, and you want to have those cross connections done across the environment. That way, the devices that use those PCs, and apologies for that, there's just a call coming through. I'm just going to mute that. Sorry for that. Um, and continuing on. So, you know, basically you want to have that single point of failure. And that way, the both firewalls can then talk to the ISPs. All three servers can then talk to the firewalls and vice versa. So should a link go out for whatever reason, we do have full availability between our environments. So it should be like that. So that's a little bit about redundancy and, and firewalls and, and the networking side. I wasn't going to go into too much detail of, of the cross connects and stuff like that because it's depending on the vendors that we use. The main outcome here is increasing that resiliency and obviously minimizing our downtime in the event of, of an issue, right? So that's the whole point. So uh, that's the pretty much the three areas. So our RAID technology is using parities to recover our hard drive functions if hard drives fail, because they do in a lot of environments. We've got our clusters of servers and clusters of firewalls as well when we cluster them all together and provide our redundancy across that infrastructure. Data replication, again, is a very common thing to have as well, and, and obviously replicating a mirror copy of our servers and, and obviously backups as well. And then finally, redundant networks. So that's just a bit of an overview of using redundancy across our technologies and infrastructure in having and increasing our resiliency and, of course, minimizing our downtime. I hope you've enjoyed this video, uh, and thank you for watching. Bye for now.